God is good. Hallelujah. I say, turn to your neighbor and say, I know you will be blessed today. Pay attention. You are about to be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. You are about to be blessed. Hallelujah. On Sunday, we were talking about the zeal of the Lord of hosts. Let's clap for the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. And I'm still talking about his healing and deliverance zeal. Hallelujah. Amen. The healing and the deliverance zeal of the Lord of hosts always flows to us from his, uh, for, because of his compassion and mercy. Hallelujah. Look at Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Praise ye the Lord. Somebody say Amen. That's an instruction. Praise ye the Lord. Say amen. amen. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. Do I hear amen? amen? In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation, the works of the Lord are great sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious. Say amen. amen. And his righteousness endureth forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has showed his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the hidden. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He had commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding of all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're looking at the healing and deliverance zeal of the Lord. His commitment to do us good is called the zeal of the Lord. Hallelujah. And not only does he have zeal, he is the Lord of hosts. I'm sure you understand by now the meaning of the Lord of hosts. That is, he has the ability to do whatever he wants to do. Clap for the king of glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> David says in this psalm, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. How do you praise God? Come on, let me see your hand. Say with my whole heart. Say it again. Not just with my mouth, or not just with my understanding, but with my whole being. Hallelujah. He says, I will praise him with my whole heart. And then he says, not just privately, but also in the congregation of his people. Hallelujah. Clap for the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Nothing is supposed to hold us back when we are praising God. Hallelujah. Supposed to praise him with our whole heart. Wherever we are, there should be no shyness when we praise God. We shouldn't be ashamed to praise him. Hallelujah. Amen. David says, I will praise him not just privately, but among his people. David in this psalm speaks of the great miracles of God. Amen. He says, the Lord's works are honorable and glorious. He speaks of the everlasting righteousness of the Lord. Amen. The Lord's righteousness is his everlasting faithfulness and ability to do us good. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> David says the Lord's works are so glorious they cannot be forgotten. Amen. Somebody said the Lord's work in my life tonight and the one he has done before. I can never forget. Clap for the King of Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. It can be, they are glorious. They are marvelous. They are powerful. They are not transient. They are the work of the Lord in our lives. They are everlasting testimonies. Let's give him the glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> it says the Lord does all these wonderful works because he is gracious. I'm full of compassion. Hallelujah. Everybody say, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. 
that is why he is doing all these wonderful works. Look at verse 4. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. That's where we are going tonight. Expect him to be gracious to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> he is showing grace and mercy to multitudes. Your, your case should not be different. It should be div your case should not be too difficult for him. You shouldn't be that bad that he cannot show you mercy. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Part of his great greatness is to faithfully take care of those who fear him. That you know you now get an extra mark. Not only is the Lord gracious and full of compassion, but because you fear him, he will show you extra mercy. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Because he's showing mercy to those who don't even fear him. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, that our Father, when, you know, when he sends his rainfall, he sends it to everybody. Is that not so? Those who don't even know him, those who are in the Shebin, they also get rainfall. Hallelujah. How much more those of us who fear him. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> he will forever meet our needs because we love him and we fear him. He will forever be true to his covenant with us, his people. God will always keep his promises. Hallelujah. We know that we are, we are chasing, pursuing wonderful promises this year. Expect them to come to pass in your life. God showed his people the power of his works and gave them the heritage of the hidden. That's one powerful thing that God does. Hallelujah. Expect to get the riches of the hidden this year. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> Let the hidden walk. Let them travel and we will inherit. <laughs> maybe, maybe you don't understand. Let's go through that psalm again. Amen. One of the things that God does for us is that he puts the wealth of the wicked in our hands. The wealth of Pharaoh. The wealth of Egyptians. Uh, maybe you don't understand. When God set the children of Israel free, when he, the nights that they were to depart from Egypt, he told them to go to their neighbors and borrow all their, <laughs> hallelujah, all their gold, all their jewelry, all their clothes, every nice thing. How do you give your things to slaves that are departing? Hallelujah. Your precious things, God allow them to give them. You know, and that's because they've been working for peanuts. God is a just God. If somebody has been cheating you, get ready that the cheating is over. <laughs> Hallelujah. Doesn't matter who they are. Husband, wife, children, family members. If they cheat you, God will go after them this year and make sure that you possess your possession. That is what this psalm is talking about. Let's read it again. Maybe you didn't pay attention from the beginning. I love this psalm. Amen. Great are the Lord's works. David is saying, praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation, the works of the Lord are great. Sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. Hallelujah. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. He had made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He had given meat unto them that fear him. Do you see that? If you fear him, you will not go hungry. You will not lack any good thing. So it's, it, it's a bonus to fear God. Hallelujah. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has showed his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the hidden. Hallelujah. Let them do their work. We will inherit the works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. Do I hear amen? He had commanded this covenant forever. How many of you know that you have a covenant with God? 
Huh? Come on, let me know. Let me see your hand if you know. <laughs> and a covenant is, is something that binds God to you, and that is done in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. The day Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for mankind, that God made a covenant through that blood with us. And everybody that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ has an unchanging, everlasting covenant with God by the blood of the Lamb. Let's clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, you see, all these things, they, will, they go to everybody, but they much more for those who fear God. That's why verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord, let's read it together, lift up your two hands and say, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding of all they that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. Tell your neighbor, you better fear God. <laughs> you will get much more from him when you fear him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is gracious. God is merciful to everybody, but those who fear him, they get a bonus. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. In Psalm 145, David says that he would extol the Lord and bless his name forever. He says, from generation to generation shall men glorify the Lord's name and speak of his mighty acts. If you are one of those who will speak of his mighty acts, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. You speak of his mercy and you speak of his mighty acts. That means you will have big, big testimonies. If you are that person, say amen. amen. From verse 8 to 9, the Lord, it says again, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He is slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all peoples and his tender mercies are always available. Hallelujah. You see, if you know all these characteristics of God, you can never lack any good thing. If you know that he's merciful, he's gracious, he blesses those who fear him, he has a covenant with those who love him, you will never panic. And you will never lose any good thing. Amen. You won't lack and you won't lose. Clap for the Lord. Amen. In Psalm 145, from verse 10 to 12, God's works in our lives must be loud in declaring his greatness and praise. I want us to look at verse 10. Let's read it. One, two, go. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. Verse 11. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. Hallelujah. Verse 12. To make known to the sons of my men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. I want you to expect the things that God will be doing in your lives to be loud. You don't understand that English. It means it must be visible. Everybody will see it and praise God. You cannot even stop talking about it. You know, there are some people when they say, come and share testimony, they don't want to talk. Uh, there are some testimonies that are loud. Hallelujah. You know, you know how you cannot hide a pregnancy? <laughs> no matter how small you are in this world. You know, like the sister that just gave birth. She was pregnant for seven months before we saw that she was pregnant. Because she was tiny. Hallelujah. She's very tiny. Amen. And when she told me I'm pregnant, I said, where's the pregnancy? How many months? Five months. I said, wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Eventually, the pregnancy spoke. It has to come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come and lift up your two hands and say, my testimony shall be loud. <laughs> it shall be seen by everybody. My testimony. I'm expecting my testimonies to be loud and clear. In the name of Jesus, say it again and again and again. My testimony, the testimony concerning my soul, my spirit, my body, my healing, my health, my victory, my family, concerning this church, concerning these ministries, shall be loud and clear. In the name of Jesus, clap for the King of glory. <laughs> Amen. And I will be able to testify. I will tell everybody. Not only will they see it, I will say it's the Lord that has done it. Amen. 
Hallelujah. All this is flowing from the compassion and the mercy of God and his zeal, his commitment to, to help his people. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In Deuteronomy 28, verse 10, And all the people of the earth shall see that thou hast called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. That's another loudness. They must be afraid of me. I don't know about you. Hallelujah. All those people that you are afraid of, they need to be afraid of you. They need to know that God is in you. Hallelujah. Look, one thing that characterized the children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, wherever they went, the people were scared. Hallelujah. They would say, no, we heard of these people. In fact, that was why Balak went to hire Balaam to curse the children of Israel. He said, those people, when they pass through this place, we will be left with nothing. Please, come and curse them for us. And we, we cannot be cursed. Hallelujah. So you know that story already. Somebody said, all the people of the earth shall see, they shall know that I'm called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of me. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You see, whenever unbelievers begin to call you a witch, and you know you are not a witch. If you are a witch, repent. But when they say you are a witch, it's because they are scared of you. The only power they understand is witchcraft. But we understand Holy Ghost craft. Hallelujah. They will be afraid of you. Hallelujah. And they will begin to say, oh, that one, we don't know the power she carries. We don't know the power. They don't know, but you know. Hallelujah. That is part of the testimony that you should have. You should not be afraid of them. They should be afraid of you. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you, you are afraid of the people you work with. You are afraid that the, of, of, the, of your boss. You are afraid of family members who are possessed. You are afraid you will lose your husband. Or your, what are you afraid of? The devil should be afraid of you. Hallelujah. Anyone who is possessed should be afraid of the child of God. That is why you should be on his side and fear him. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. That's a specific promise. Amen. Out of his love for us, out of his compassion for us, Psalm 145 from verse 14 to 21 says, The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Do I hear amen? amen. Thou openest thy hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. Again, you see that word. Fear God. He will fulfill your desire. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Tell your neighbor, fear God. Fear God. He will fulfill your desire. He will answer your prayers and save you and preserve you. Hallelujah. The Lord preserves all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Clap for the King of glory. Amen. <laughs> now, this psalm is telling us that the Lord um, is going to meet you at the point of your need because your eyes are on him. You are expecting him to bless you. How many of you are expecting him to bless you? Let me warn you, never come to the house of God without expectation. The, never ever go to church just because it is Sunday or it is Wednesday or Monday. No. Know that you have an appointment with God and he is waiting to bless you. In every service, angels are assigned Never be so religious as to just come to church and just mark register. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's, 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 in fact, that's an offense to God. Come with expectation. 
come with expectation that God is gracious, God is compassionate, God is zealous, and he wants to bless me. <laughs> How many of us believe that? Say amen. amen. You have to have expectation. Hallelujah. You, do you know what made the, the cripple that was sitting in front of the church, the temple in Jerusalem, to walk? He's been sitting there forever. But then it was an hour of prayer, and Peter and John, they were coming, and he looked at them expecting something. And Peter picked it up. And Peter said, look at us. And he looked and Peter said, silver and gold I don't have. But such as I have, I give unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stand up and walk. Don't just come like a pitiful soul. Come like somebody that knows I have a covenant with God. And I'm going to receive something. Hallelujah, because he never fails. I say he never fails. God never fails. He never fails. God never fails. He abides with me. He gives me victory. My God never fails. Just keep that faith. And never cease to pray. Just walk upright with him noonday and night. He'll be there. He'll be there. There's no need to worry for God. Never fails. Clap for the Lord. He never fails. <laughs> Give him glory. He never fails. <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, I hope you have an expectation. I hope you are going home with at least one miracle. <laughs> I hope you didn't just come here to mark register, to show your face, so that people can know you go to church. I hope you came to meet Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He abides with me. He gives me big to read my Lord. Never fails. I will keep that faith and never cease to pray and walk upright with him noonday and night he'll be there he'll be there i don't have to worry for god never fails clap for our father he doesn't fail <laughs> hallelujah Never come to church without expectation. Hallelujah. Remember the woman with the issue of blood. She didn't tell anybody that she was going to get a miracle, but she made up her mind. Hallelujah. Amen. She had suffered for too long. And this service is for you if you have suffered for too long. You will soon see that. If you have been in a situation for too long, this is the day of your testimony. <laughs> Hallelujah. She was in the crowd. Suffered, you know her story. All the doctors, they finished. They took all her money. The witch doctors, the good doctors, the, uh, <laughs> the quack doctors. <laughs> the qualified ones, the ones that they, they all, if she was fed up now. She said, now I'm done. Hallelujah. And then she went in the crowd. And in those days, if you're a woman and you are bleeding, you're not supposed to even be, go near a man. Hallelujah. And you know that Jesus Christ was not just the only man there. He was surrounded by men, his apostles. But this woman, I know his commitment. I know his zeal. I know his name. I know his graciousness. I know his faithfulness. I know he's, he's not an ordinary man. I know he's different from all the other men. And she went. And she just said, because if these other men know what I'm doing, they will trample on me. I will just touch the hem of his garment. And then that's it. She had an expectation. 
So I don't need much. Just touch. And she did. And immediately, she was healed. Not only was she healed, Jesus knew somebody touched him. If you have an expectation tonight, the Lord will see it. And power will flow from heaven and meet you at the point of that need. Hallelujah. She, the Lord knew. And the Lord said, who touched me? <laughs> and then the disciples thought it was ridiculous. Uh, everybody. It's a there is a crowd of people um, pressing on you. Everybody is touching you. You are saying, who touched me? The Lord said, somebody touched me. Hallelujah. May you touch the Lord tonight. May he know that you are different from your neighbor. Your neighbor who is just sitting there thinking of Mahangu, <laughs> thinking of dinner, thinking of so many things. May you think of Jesus and touch him right now. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the Bible says a woman came out trembling because she knew she's been exposed. She thought I could just do it and just go. And the Lord said, ah, somebody touched me. She said, it's me, it's me, Lord. Uh, huh? The Lord said, don't worry. Your faith has set you free. May you touch the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. May you stop coming to church. Just coming for the sake of coming. May you touch him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says here that if you, if you call on him in truth, he will answer you. Hallelujah. That he opens his hands to meet us at the point of our needs, and to satisfy every one of us. Hallelujah. That is what this scripture says. I want to read it to you again. That's Psalm 145 from verse 14 to 21. It says, The Lord upholdeth all that fall, and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. It says, Amen. It says, The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Somebody said, This is my due season. Thou openest thy hand and satisfies the desire of every living thing. Hallelujah. Why would your own case be different? God satisfied the desires of every living thing, even the desires of animals. Hallelujah. Desires of birds. <laughs> Hallelujah. How much more? Those of us who are in his image, clap for our Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. He's faithful. The Lord is nigh unto them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. If you mean business like that woman I just shared the story, he will satisfy your needs. Verse 19, he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him. Do you love the Lord? I said, you love the Lord? That's how I know that corona will not kill you. Yeah. Hallelujah. It preserves those who love him. Hallelujah. Because he needs you. Hallelujah. He knows that if you love him, you will sing his praise. If you love him, you will preach the gospel. If you love him, you will, you will live to glorify his name. So he will preserve you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, the Lord knows that you expect him to answer all your prayers and bless you. His zeal will bless you. Hallelujah. How many of you are expecting the Lord to answer all your prayers? Uh, come on, let me see your hand. Some of us, we just expect him to answer some prayers. No, all of them, all of them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Because nothing is too difficult for him. Hallelujah. You know, some Christians will be like, Lord, if you, can just, if you can just give me a job, even if I'm a cleaner, anyway, it's okay. Ah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told you the story of the, the sister who, whose backy was stolen. And with the children inside the backy, we had just finished a seminar here. We just started Christ Love in those days here in Namibia. The story I've told many times because it's an amazing story. <laughs> Eventually, we prayed. Amen. Let me cut that short. The children were found. And then when the children were found, uh, then I said, oh, Lord, but 
we still need the back aid. The sister said, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I just have, I, I have my children. I said, no, God will bring the back aid back. It will fulfill all your desires. Uh, it will answer all the prayers. And within minutes, they found the back aid with a handbag inside, intact, hallelujah. Our God is faithful. Expect him to fully satisfy your desires. Clap for the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. How many of us are expecting great and mighty things? You know what? God, God says, I'm mighty in your midst. Hallelujah. Shout and praise him and call on him. Don't be afraid. God is saying, I'm mighty in your midst. You know, you, we, we have to stop limiting God. Amen? God wants you to bring a tanker so he can fill it with water. You are bringing a glass. Come on now. Some of you, you bring a glass or you bring a, a drum, a tanker. Me, I have brought a tanker. I don't know about you. Me, I have brought my tanker to, take, to receive the impossible. Well, you are laughing. I say I brought my tanker. Hey. This is the year that you must expect God to do the impossible and to do great things. Hallelujah. You see, some of you that are jobless, if I were you, based on that promise, I would be going from, uh, from place to place and just tell them I need a job and expect to be hired. Don't sit at home and say, I need a job, I need a job, I need a job, hey, Lord, I need a job. God says, <laughs> go get your job. Hallelujah. Go to the next filling station and ask them, do you need somebody here? I can work. I can do your I can work at your till. Hallelujah. You can go to the to the hospital. You can go anywhere and look for a job and God will be waiting for you because you expect him to give you a job. Clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> you expect him. If you fear him, he will fulfill all your heart's desire. If you love him, he will preserve you. Hallelujah. I want us to look at some specific things that show the zeal of the compassion of the Lord to heal us and to set us free. In Matthew 9, 35 to 36, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. How many sicknesses? All of them. How many? How many? All of them. Healing every sickness, every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Hallelujah. One thing that you need to understand in this season is that the Lord is moving in his mercy. Hallelujah. Is moving in his compassion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In Matthew 14, from verse 13 to 21, when Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart, and when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, and took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break, and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men, beside women and children. This is a very popular story. 
The problem with some of these stories is that they are so popular that we don't meditate on them anymore. Meditate on them. Because every time you meditate on the word of God, you get something new out of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus, ha if, you, if you read from verse 1 to 12 you will see, uh, of this Matthew 14, you will see that that was the uh, story of the beheading of John the Baptist. And we know that John the Baptist was his cousin. Hallelujah. Remember, they are cousins. How many of you know that they are cousins? <laughs> if you don't know, go and read your Bible very well. Hallelujah. They, they are cousins. Amen. And so when he heard that his cousin had just been murdered by uh, the king, he was going somewhere to go and mourn. He wanted to just go and be on his own. Amen. The Bible says when Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot. Hallelujah. He wanted to be on his own. And then the people showed up. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. He had his own issues at that time. But because he saw the people, that there were many and they needed help. He had compassion and he began to heal them. Not only did he heal them, he fed them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I want you to see here is the zeal of the Lord. His, his willingness to always be there for us. Clap for the Lord. Amen. His willingness to always have compassion on us. His willingness to... It, everything about Jesus is his sacrifice for mankind. Amen. He, he did nothing to glorify himself. Everything he did, he did for us. Amen. Hallelujah. So he had compassion and he was uh, arrested by the people. He stayed there three more days. Three days. In spite of the fact that that was his cousin that had just been beheaded. He stayed three more days with the people and he helped them, healed them, and he fed them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the same vein, in Matthew 15, uh, from verse 32, then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continued with me now three days and have nothing to eat. I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. Hallelujah. It's the same story, uh, maybe a little bit different this time, but what I want you to see is that the Lord said they had been with him for three days. Some of you have been with him for three years. Three months with the same problem. Tonight, his compassion will set you free. In the mighty name of Jesus. His mercy will set you free. Just expect it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In Matthew 20, from verse 29 to 34. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside when they had Heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. That should be your prayer tonight. Uh, Lord, I have now been long in this situation. Have mercy on me. Lift up your two hands and say that much. Say, O Lord, this situation has persisted for too long in my life, in my family. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on the earth. Have mercy on us concerning this coronavirus. Oh, Lord, have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when they prayed like that, the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. What I want you to see here is that if you appeal to his mercy, he will have compassion on you. Hallelujah. This is like the story of blind Bartimaeus. You know, some people, 
they find this, the reason why they shouldn't believe the Lord. They say, hey, some of the gospel, uh, they, will re they, they recorded one story as, as something, and another gospel, it is recorded differently. Hallelujah. The main thing is that Jesus is in the story. Amen. Jesus is the story here. Hallelujah. He is the one healing the sick and setting them free. And because they appeal to his compassion, they got his compassion. Praise the Lord. I want you to also turn to Luke chapter 13, from verse 10 to 17. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bound together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to walk, in them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And not, not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound low these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. What I want you to see in this very story is that this woman also had been long in her problem. Hallelujah. She had been sitting there going to church day in, day out, 18 years. Hallelujah. With the same infirmity. Amen. Amen. Now, in the last story we read, we saw that the blind men were begging for mercy. This woman did not even ask for anything. She was used to the infirmity. And some of us, we don't even pray about those sicknesses anymore. You get used to them. Don't get used to them. Let today be the day of your deliverance. <laughs> Hallelujah. She was sitting there, and she was bowed down together. She couldn't still stand up straight. Then the Lord saw her, and he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, You are free today. You are loosed from your infirmity. You are loosed from those problems. You are loosed in the name of Jesus. You are loosed. You better receive it. One beautiful thing, when the Lord heals you prophetically like that, you must receive it. Hallelujah. The woman did not say, oh, I have been bowed for so 18 years, and now you just say, you are loosed. <laughs> I cannot. She stood up. Hallelujah. And the Pharisees were offended. There are people who want to keep you in your infirmity. They want to keep you in your problem. They don't want you to escape, but you are escaping now. I say you are escaping now. You are escaping today, not tomorrow, right now. Shout hallelujah. Whether you like it or not, you are escaping today. Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying that? So you hear all these things, but really, it's as if your spirit cannot catch it. Let your spirit catch it. Amen. Amen. A woman was instantly healed. Amen. And then the enemies of the Lord were very angry. They said, uh, and the ruler of the synagogue, verse 14, answered, him, answered with indignation, with anger, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to walk. In them, therefore, come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? 
And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, lo, these eighteen years be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? The Lord says it doesn't matter whether it's a Sabbath day or not, whether you, you are asking for healing or not, whether the, the devil likes it or not, whether it is convenient or not. He says you have suffered for too long in that situation. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Whether it's convenient for the devil or not, whether you believe it or not, receive that deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Whenever the Lord wants to heal, it does not depend on you or anybody or the devil. Hallelujah. Because his name is Jehovah El Shaddai. His power is always present to heal whenever he wants to heal. Hallelujah. You see, I want you to receive that. I'm not even depending on your faith now. I'm telling you, thus hear the Lord. I'm telling you that today is your day. If you believe it, good for you. If you don't believe it, good for you. But today you'll be set free. Hallelujah. Because that woman did not ask for anything. Hallelujah. She was just sitting there. She was used to that bondage. Hallelujah. And suddenly the Lord, because of his zeal, looked at her and said, no, enough is enough. And he said, enough is enough for you and I today. Enough is enough for this coronavirus. Hallelujah. Clap for the king of glory. <laughs> See, the madman of Gadara in Mark chapter 5, he was mad. He was Nobody could help him. The Bible says they couldn't tie him. No chains could tie him. He would break the chains in pieces. They had left him to die in the cemetery. He was not expecting anything. But the Lord went to him and set him free. Hallelujah. He was too mad to even, to even ask for help, mercy, to ask for healing. Hallelujah. Amen. But the Lord set him free. Hallelujah. Lazarus was very dead. And the people who should have asked for his deliverance were not really asking. Those who were alive, who were supposed to say, Lord, we know you can set him free. We know you can raise him from the dead. They were speaking contrary words. But because the zeal of the Lord of hosts was present, the Lord has set him free. You will be free today. The man at the pool of Bethesda, he was not asking for anything. He was actually lying down there for 38 years. It's a story you've heard often. So my point is that whenever the Lord wants to heal, he heals. Whether you believe it or not, whether the devil likes it or not, whether the witches in your father's house, mother's house like it or not, whether they think it's possible or not, today you are being set free. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus, you must receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember the story of the widow of Nen. I stand up on our feet. Luke, seven, Luke chapter 7. From verse 11 to 17. Luke 7, 11 to 17. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out. The only son of his mother... And she was a widow, and much of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, 
and that God had visited his people. And he, this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. Hallelujah. This is the year of the Lord's visitation. Let him visit you. This is a straightforward story. The son, the only son of a widow. The devil is wicked. Hallelujah. First he killed the husband and now he killed the only son. And the people were following the funeral procession. The woman was crying. Amen. And this widow was crying. She was not praying. She was crying because she had given up. And Jesus came. Hallelujah. And he saw the funeral procession. And he just touched the coffin. That's all he did. And the pro procession stopped. I want you to see the power that is at hand. I want you to see the compassion of the Lord that is at hand for you. I want you to see what the Lord is doing in this season. In this season, you don't have to struggle. You don't have to fear. All you have to do is receive the mercy of God. And the Lord said to the woman, weep not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only Jesus can tell you not to weep in that situation. Because he knows the end from the beginning. He knows that the, the end to that affliction has come. Hallelujah. And then he touched the coffin. And then uh, they stood still. And he said, young man, stand up. It's as simple as that. Young man, stand up. And he stood up. Hallelujah. And he delivered him to his mother. Hallelujah. It's very easy to receive your testimony right now. Lift up your hands. Jesus is here right now. Jesus is here right now. He is here to meet your needs and to set the captives free. Jesus is here right now. Jesus is here. Jesus is here right now. Jesus is here right now he is here to meet your needs and to set the captives free jesus is here right now oh the blood of jesus Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes whiter than the snow. Hallelujah. I don't know what your need is. But lift up your hands and receive. If you have pain anywhere, put your hand there. Put your hand wherever the pain is and begin to receive your healing. The Lord is here. The Lord is here to set you free. If you have any sickness that you cannot reach the place, you can put your hand on your head. If your pain is in your stomach, put your hand there. Just receive your healing. Just begin to thank God for his goodness and for his mercies, for his compassion over your life. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
Serious miracles are going to take place now from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. Receive your miracle. Receive the mercy of God. Receive that compassion. That long-standing illness, that long-standing situation, the Lord is taking care of it right now. He's taking care of it right now. He's taking care of it. In Makoropokosento, Rebakazento, Rekesike, Dedekesente, Dedekazento, Rabakadikazan. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Receive your testimony. I command the blood of Jesus to begin to flow from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. Put your hand wherever the pain is. If you cannot reach the place, put your hand on your head and begin to plead the blood of Jesus from the top of your head to the tip of your toes, from the top of your head to the tip of your toes. I command that chest pain to disappear. Receive your healing, receive your healing. Receive your healing, 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 receive your deliverance, receive your testimony. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. He has never failed. I rebuke every sickness. I rebuke every ailment. I rebuke every disease. Jesus. Ramma Mako de Kesike de de Kande Baba, Prako de de Kazento, Prako de de Kesente, Rekesika de Baba, Prako Shokropoko Sento Rababa. Thank you, Father Kase Kanda Baba Kode Keset, Makso Poko Se Kande Baba, Mako Se Kande Baba. I plead the blood, I plead the blood of Jesus on everyone that is here. On everyone that is watching online, on everyone that is sick right now, in this nation, be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus receive your healing receive your testimony Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, everyone with a chest pain, receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. I command the pain to disappear in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Wherever those pains are in your body, let them disappear in the mighty name of Jesus. Every arrow, every disease that is plaguing you, let it disappear in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to pray against evil dreams. If you are here, you are plagued by bad dreams, I want you to come forward. Hallelujah. Thank you, King of Glory. Father, we praise you. You know you're having bad dreams. Just come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to talk to the Lord about that dream and say you don't ever want to see that dream again. Just say, oh Lord, 
just take away these evil dreams from me. I don't ever want to see those dreams anymore. Lift up your hands and pray. Talk to the Lord. I don't want to ever, 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 let those dreams be rebuked in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God consume those dreams. Let the, let the, let the source of those dreams catch fire in the name of Jesus. Just believe that today is the end of those dreams. The Lord will go to where those dreams are coming from. He will punish the source of those dreams. If yours is even a dream that you don't like, maybe they are not necessarily bad, just come out any dream that you know that it, this is not from God. You need to reject it. Come out and reject it because God does not want you to be having evil dreams. Just reject them. Reject them. Reject them. Cancel them. I want you to think of them right now and say, I use the blood of Jesus against all these dreams, I command them to disappear. Makadede koropoko sent. Rekosopoko shekade baba. Makodede ka sente dede. Rekosopoko shekade baba kodeke zente. Rapa pa kodeke zente orea. Rapa ba kodeke zente. Maseka dede ke sento. Haba fada pa pa kode ba kode kosoka dede ke sento. Reke sente dede. Maseka de pa koropoko sent. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Maseka de de pa koropoko sente dede. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lift up your two hands and ask the Lord, and this is for every one of us, Lord, I want my dreams to change. I want my dream lives to glorify you. I want to dream of your will for my life. I want to dream of your kindness. Dream, your dream life must be, must be purified. It must speak of the will of God for your life. You know, your dream life must show you your destiny. It should not be a battleground. The two Josephs in the Bible were dreamers. Joseph dreamt of his destiny. Imagine if he was always dreaming of snakes. Was he ever going to fulfill destiny? Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I want my dream life to show me my destiny. I don't want my dream life to be a battleground. I want concrete dreams, dreams from heaven, dreams that give me information, dreams that guide me. Dreams that, that, that expose me to the voice of angels that make the Holy Spirit talk to me. Dreams that let me hear the voice of the King of Kings. My dream life must not be a, a battleground. Must be a, must be heavenly. Must must point to my destiny. Must show me the will of God. I want you to begin to thank God for that. That your dream life is going to change. You are going to begin to see visions. Jacob was shown how to escape from being exploited by Laban in their dream. My dream must be visions from heaven, visions from the throne room of my father. I want you to pray from the bottom of your heart. I want you to have that desire that as from today, I want to dream of, the, of, of visions from my father, from my father's throne room. Visions of angels. I want to dream destiny dreams. Destiny dreams. Destiny dreams. Not dreams, not dreams that harass me. 
Makoropa kade de kezento. Re kesike de 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 koropa pako de koze kade baba. Masoko de de kasento. Pray, 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 pray. The Lord is beginning to attack those dream criminals. Those devils that want to ro- that want to rob you of your destiny by giving you frightening dreams. The Lord rebukes them tonight. Makoropo kosike tete katete koropo kosento. Destiny dreams, dreams of, that give me information, powerful information. I want to have nasty dreams. I don't want to have dreams of the devil. Destiny dreams, dreams that come from the throne room of my father, Papa Kodede Kezente Dede Kade Baba, Rapapa Kode Kase Kade Baba, Rapoko Se Kade Baba, Masopoko She Kade Baba. Dreams of direction, dreams of breakthrough, dreams. Imagine Jacob had a dream. And when he woke up, he became a millionaire. He was able to, to take back what Laban had stolen from him. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody put your right hand on your heart and lift up your left hand. Say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I disconnect myself from evil foundations, from evil covenants that gives me evil dreams in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now put your left hand on your belly button. Hallelujah. Put your hand on, right hand on your heart. Say, right now, I disconnect myself from all the evil dreams from my father's house, from my mother's house. Any evil dream coming from evil covenant, hear the word of God. I disconnect myself from you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to pray in tongues. Disconnect yourself. Be delivered. Those dreams are coming from your father's house. They're coming from your mother's house. They want to derail you. They want to rob you. I want dreams from heaven. Dreams from the throne room of my father. Dreams that inform me of my destiny. Blood of Jesus Christ. Visit every foundation here. In Jesus' mighty name, you are delivered from those evil foundations. All those evil covenant curses that are coming to you through your dream, from your father's house, from your mother's house, from your foundation, I destroy them in the name of Jesus. Say right now, I receive the new covenant that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. For my salvation, for my deliverance, for my guidance, for my healing, for my prosperity. In the name of Jesus, I receive covenant dreams from God Almighty. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands and receive covenant dreams. Holy Ghost, take over. Aha, take over. Holy Ghost, take over their dream lives. Holy Ghost, take over their dream lives. Holy Ghost, take over everyone's dream life. In Jesus' name we pray. 
lift up your two hands and say, Holy Spirit, I welcome you into my dream life. As from tonight, Holy Spirit, talk to me when I'm asleep. Keep me away from evil covenant dreams. Holy Spirit, help me. Pray in tongues. Holy Spirit, rain down. Let your voice be heard. Father, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as is in heaven. Let the dream lives of your people change. Covenant dreams. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Some of you, you dream destiny dreams, but you, because you don't understand the destiny dreams, you do nothing with them. That is going to change tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Do you know what promoted Daniel? It was his ability to dream and to interpret dreams. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's, leave, let's not go into all that story of Daniel. One thing that will change your dream life also is your ability to consecrate yourself. Hallelujah. If you spend the whole night watching movie magic, you will dream evil. Be very careful. All you do is watch terrible things on TV. Then you wonder why your dream life. If you don't spend time in the word of God, you don't spend time pr in prayer, the enemy will infiltrate your dream life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So before we pray the next prayer, I want you to lift up your hands and say, Father, forgive me for all the time I'm wasting watching evil movies that are bringing me evil dreams. Father, forgive me. Deliver me from the television set. Open your mouth and pray for that. Just watching evil movies. Spending time on the internet. Watching wrong things. What do you expect to see? As the Lord to purify you. Pray, 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 pray. We don't have much time. Repent. Tell the Holy Spirit to keep you from evil movies. Evil things. Lost. Watching things that you shouldn't be watching on the internet. How can your dream life be holy? Repent, repent, repent. Ask the Holy Spirit to wash you clean with the blood of Jesus so that your mind can be holy. In Jesus' name we pray. Now you are going to pray. The Bible says that because Daniel Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, those four kids, they refused to defile themselves with their king's food. And God gave them wisdom. Hallelujah. They were ten times better than their peers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And of all the magicians in the land, the king found them ten times better. Praise the Lord. Amen. When the king had a weird dream that he could not interpret, he called his magicians, they couldn't interpret, he was going to kill them. Daniel said, don't worry, don't be so much in a haste. I will go and seek the Lord. He was that close to God. The king did not tell them what dream he had. He wanted the magicians to design the, the dream and tell him the interpretation. None of them could do it. But Daniel, because he has the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. He went and sought the Lord. He got the dream and he got the interpretation. 
That man became a prime minister in a foreign land where he was supposed to be a slave because his dream life was powerful. Because he could interpret dreams. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say, Oh Lord, as you, as you cleanse me, as you give me powerful dream life, give me the power to understand what I dream. Open your mouth and pray in tongues because a lot of your destiny is in your dream. What you're supposed to be in life, God is showing you. Where you're supposed to go, he shows you. What job you're supposed to go and do, who you should marry, he shows you. But because you lack power to interpret, power to even dream, destiny dreams and to interpret them. Open your mouth and say, Father, I need power to dream destiny dreams and to interpret them in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and pray seriously. <laughs> pray. God can show you a lot of things in their dream. He can show you everything that you need to know. But if your dream life is already a battleground, it's a problem. Maso poco se kade baba, reke se kade baba, prako de kaske de baba kade kese, mas kade poko ro poko sonto, prapa baba baba. Power to interpret my dreams, power to dream destiny dreams, and to interpret them. Mako ro poko se kade de kasanto. In Jesus' name we pray. What do you think helped Joseph? <laughs> Joseph dreamt when he was a young man. Hallelujah. He said, I saw the star, I, I saw the moon and the sun and ten stars. And they were bowing to his one star. Hallelujah. He saw the sheaves or the other sheaves, they were bowing to his own sheaves. And in spite of all he went through, in spite of the fact that they sold him into slavery, in spite of the fact that he was, he was nearly pushed into fornication, uh, in spite of the fact that he was put in prison for what he did not do, he held on to his dreams. He knew that he was going somewhere. And that was what kept him from fornication. Hallelujah. His dream prepared him for his destiny. Ha, lift up your two hands and say, Father, help me to dream destiny dreams in the name of Jesus and help me to look up to you Based on the dreams you show me, help me to listen to you. Help me to understand the dreams. Clap your hands and pray. He became a prime minister. The dream came to pass because he knew what God showed him. Marco Ropoko Sikarede, Rababako de Casa. Oh Lord, the Baba Baba Rababa Kade Kase Kade Baba Kade Kesento, Makase Kade Baba Rababa Kade Kesento, Reko Sopo Koshen, Rababa Kade Kesen, Meko Sopo Koshen, Rababa Kade Kesento Rababa. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now you are going to kill every snake you have ever seen in your dream. Hello, am I talking to somebody? Every snake, you can come out if you have been dreaming of animals, snakes pursuing you, harassing you. You are going to kill them tonight. They will never come back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come out, come out, come out. If you know that you are dreaming those dreams and you need to kill them. Hallelujah. Once and for all. Hallelujah. Every snake, every cat, every snail, Every rat that ever pursued you, every cow, they must die now. Hallelujah. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, every snake, every cat, every cow, every animal that ever, ever pursued me in my dream, my father, my father, I command them to die in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, kill them. Kill them. Kill them. Kill them. Any snake, let them die. Marco Ropoko, say, Kadeba Bako de Kesento, 
Father Lord, the Dickinson, the Baba Baba Kosheka, the Dickinson, the Dede, Abba Father Baba, Rapa Kode Dickinson, Preco Shokro Baba, Masika Dede, Rapa Bako de Cassento, Marco de Cassento Dede, Rapa Baba Kode Cassento, Marso Poco Shoka Dede, Rapa Baba, Prako de Pabako de Cassento Dede. Pray, don't even joke. Command the fire of God to consume them. Let the fire of God 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 consume them. Marco de de Corupocos, Cade Baba, Cade Casse, Cade Baba, Rebaco Sento. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift up your right and say, Every dream I've ever dreamt. You see, one thing is that prayers don't die, dreams also don't die. Hallelujah. If you dreamt of something bad 10 years ago and you haven't dealt with it, you can deal with it today. Hallelujah. Lift up your right hand. Say, any dream from the pit of hell that I've ever had, tonight I reject you. I reject your interpretation. I reject your power over my destiny, over my life, over my family. In the name of Jesus, I command the judgment of God, 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 the judgment of God on the source of those dreams, on the source of those snakes, those animals, those witches, those attacks. Arise, O Lord, consume them by fire. Clap your hands and let the judgment of God consume them. Marco Ropoco se cade de la Rabba Baba 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 the zeal of the Lord. Makare poko si kade baba 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 kode kese kade baba. Oh yes, si kade de kade baba. Pra kode baba kode baba. Pra kode baba kode koson. Pra koso kade baba. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Shout hallelujah. Shout another 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 hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I've told you the Lord has come to set you free. Clap for the King of glory. His zeal will set you free tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up your tongue and say, I command. Say it loud, I command. Say it loud, I command. A reversal of every evil dream. In the name of Jesus Christ, clap your hands and reverse it. Oh, yes. Command it. Enough is enough. Makadede koropoko sekede baba. Aha. In Jesus' name we pray. They have imagined the thing which they are not able to perform. Everything they imagined against you and they brought to you in their dream. I send it back to them sevenfold in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Isaiah 49, verse 24. The Lord says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. Do I hear amen? amen? And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. 
the Lord says, I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood. Some of them will die tonight Amen. unless they leave you alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior, and I redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. I have told you that your testimony must shout. Your miracle must shout. Your testimony. Your testimony must advertise God. Your deliverance must advertise the power of God. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, I give you praise. Because even if I'm a lawful captive, in the name of Jesus, I receive my deliverance now. In the name of Jesus, I receive deliverance for myself, for my children, for my children's children, for my children's children's children, to a thousand generations. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come out from every evil captivity by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, oh Lord, according to your word that says that even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered for you will contend with him that is contending with me you will save my children my father my god even if i'm a lawful captive even if my children are lawful captives father contend with them that are contending with us in the name of jesus feed them that are oppressing us with their own flesh let them be drunken with their own blood as sweet wine in the name of jesus christ that all flesh may know that you are the lord and you are our savior our redeemer the mighty one of jacob Pray tongues. Makoro boko se rekeske de baba. Abba fada fa pa ko de ke se te de de ka de baba. Oh yes. Enough is enough. Pa pa ko de de ka de ka se ke de de koro ba ko de ka se ka de baba. Abba fada pa ba 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 ba. Rabba ba 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 ba. Rabba ba 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 ba. Rabba ba 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 ba. Reko se ke de de. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Isaiah 44, verse 24. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. He that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, that frustrated the tokens of the liars and make a diviners mad that turneth wise men backward and make it their knowledge foolish that confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, all that God is saying there is that, you know, when they come to your dream, they have tokens. Hallelujah. The snakes may be their token. They can say things. They can even come to you in the physical and say things. They can give you money. It can be a token. They can give you food. It can be a token. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They can give you gifts. It can be a token of destruction. But God says it will frustrate their tokens. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says, I frustrate the tokens of liars. And then he says it will make them mad. Somebody will go crazy for your sake if they don't leave you alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, he says it will turn their wisdom backward. Wicked people think they are, they are smart. They will be giving you money, but their money is cursed. They give you food, their food is cursed. They give you clothes, it's cursed. They laugh at you, their laughter is cursed. God will frustrate them tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, Father, I stand on your word. Every token of darkness in my dream life, 
in my wake up, in my waking life, every token of the wicked, of witches, of wizards, of evil family members, of evil friends, my father, my father, as I clap my hands, let them be frustrated. Oh, Jesus, I frustrate all the tokens. Uh -huh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, their tokens are frustrated. In Isaiah 54, the Lord says, lift up your hands. It says in verse 16, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Do I hear amen? And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. Amen. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Say, it is written, no weapon that is formed against me shall ever prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment, whether in the covens of witchcraft, whether in their heart, every judgment of darkness, in the name of Jesus, I condemn it. I condemn their judgment. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands and condemn their words. Papa, condemn their evil dreams. Aha, uh -huh. condemn it. Oh yes, kadere kuropa kode kese kade baba kode koso kade baba kade kese ntere makoso poko shen. In Jesus' name, we condemn their tongues. We condemn their words. We condemn their powers. I command an evil angel to begin to run after them. The angel that is going to judge them. Let their ways be dark and slippery. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every witch, every wizard that is assigned against us, against our families, let them receive the judgment of God right now. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands and pray in tongues. Let them be judged. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, you are free. Shout hallelujah. As from tonight, your dream life shall become destiny dreams in the name of Jesus. You will enjoy your sleep. You will enjoy your dreams. You will enjoy your sleep. You will enjoy your dreams. You will enjoy your sleep. You will enjoy your dreams. In the name of Jesus. And anyone that says they won't give up, they will die for your sake. Because the Bible says, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Enough is enough. If they say they will not leave you alone, clap for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You die for your sake. In Jesus' mighty name, you are set free. Lift up your hands as we read Psalm 118 together quickly. Psalm 118. I want you to open your mouth and read it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy... Are you reading with me? Louder. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now say... That, that fear, let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. Say it again. The, uh -huh. 
Say it again. What can man do unto me? Hallelujah. Verse 7. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. Say it again. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. Uh-huh. Verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Verse 9. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Verse 10. All nations come past me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. Verse 11. They compass me about, yea, they compass me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Hallelujah. Verse 12. They compass me about like beasts. They are quenched as a fire of tongues, for in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Uh -huh. Verse 13. Thou hast trust so at me that I might fall, but the Lord help me. Uh -huh. The Lord is my strength and song and is become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth be like now. Read this one like that. Go back to verse 15. Lift up your hands. Say the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in my tabernacle. It's in my life. It's in my dream. It's in my house because I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say the right hand of the Lord. Do it valiantly. Hallelujah. Go on, verse 16. Hallelujah. Say the right hand of the Lord. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord. Do it valiantly. Say the right hand of the Lord is exalted in my dream life. In my waking life, the right hand of the Lord is exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 17, quickly, quickly. Aha. Uh -huh. Say, I shall not die. And that's for somebody who has been afraid of death. The couple of you here, you're dreaming of death, but you will not die. Say, I shall not die. Say it loud. But live. And declare the works of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Say, my family, my children, my children's children, my church members, we shall not die in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. We shall live to declare the works of the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Verse 18. Let's move on quickly. Come on. The Lord has chastened me so, but he hath not given me over unto death. Verse 19, open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and hast become my salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 22, come on. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. When we rejoice and be glad in it, save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord which has showed us light. Bind a sacrifice with the cords, even unto the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For oh, his mercy and the forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, wave your hands and say, thank you, Father. Thank you for setting me free. Thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, you are free. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Every night, read this Psalm 118. Amen. And never sleep, those of you with these dreams, never sleep without praying. Hallelujah. This is a battle. Amen. Read Psalm 118. Read Psalm 91. If they still pursue you, pursue them with Psalm 35. They will leave you alone. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May the Lord fight for you. May the Lord avenge you. May the sword of the Lord cut your enemies in pieces. May all those snakes die from the hand of God Almighty. May they dry up by the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. I rebuke ancestral spirits in this place. You demons of the ancestors troubling the people of God. May the fire of God consume you in hell. In the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I want you to take your offering as the choir comes up quickly, quickly, quickly. We're just going to be singing Jesus, 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 Jesus. One time, Jesus. Come on. Let's come forward quickly. The time is gone. Hallelujah. Give our offerings. Amen. Ushers, please. Amen. Wave your hands and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. One time, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Two times, Jesus, Jesus. Three times, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Four times, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Five times, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Forever, Jesus, forever, Jesus, forever, Jesus, Jesus, forever, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. appreciate your God. Lord, thank you for speaking to us, O oh Lord, so powerfully tonight. Father, our lives will never be remained the same, O oh Lord. We just want to give you glory and honor, my Father, my God, what you are doing in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. 
right now, Lord, you lift up all of this offering, O oh Lord, to the grace of uh, to your throne, my Father, my God. It's a prayer, Lord, that you bless everyone who has given, my Father, my God, and those who could not give tonight. Father, you will visit them and will provide for them as well in the mighty name of Jesus. My Father, my God, O oh Lord, we commit this offering into your hands, and we pray that your wisdom shall prevail, O oh Lord, in expanding, O oh Lord, this offering in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, my Father, my God, because, Lord, your house shall remain blessed forever in Jesus' name. And our lives shall never lack in Jesus' name. We cover this offering in the precious blood of Jesus. Thank you, my Father, my God. Every time when you pray, you hear us. In Jesus' name, we pray thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. We seal our lives with the blood of Jesus. We seal our testimonies and our victory with the blood of Jesus. Surely... Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Go home and enjoy your dream lives in Jesus' name. Stands for the for the youth and the 